Thank you, Caitlin. Well, NASCAR's roots come from the dirt. Hundreds of races in the NASCAR history books. But in the major series today, there is only one race, and that is tonight, right here, the Dirt Derby at Eldora. And only two former winners in the field tonight. One is Matt Crafton, the former series champ, won here in 2017, but he hasn't won since. He's way overdue. Crafton starts on the front row. The favorite, however, has to be Stuart Friesen, right? The big block modified star has had a successful run in the truck series, but he's still seeking his first win, second and third here the last two years. Could it be first tonight? But a victory for this young man, Todd Gilliland, be like Christmas, a favorite for the series championship when the year began. Now he's on the verge of missing the playoffs. Sheldon Creed in a similar situation, last year's ARCA champ in a must win, but his recent results are trending the wrong way. He's comfortable on dirt, but can he win on it? We're about to find out. One driver we know can win is Chase Briscoe, did it last year, and for more on his return, here's Hermie Sadler. Vince, tonight is fun for us because we don't get to come to Eldora but once a year, race on the dirt. It's exciting, it's unique. We have a lot of drivers tonight that have to race with one eye on the checkered flag, one eye on a chance to race for a championship. But that is not the case for Chase Briscoe. He won this race last year. He comes back trying to repeat tonight. Same team, same truck, same crew chief. So far today, everything has been checked off the boxes. He's won his qualifying heat race. He starts up front tonight, looking to go back to back at Eldora, Allen. Herman, one of the hottest drivers in the series right now is 18-year-old Harrison Burton. That's good news because he is still trying to solidify his spot in the playoffs. The bad news, he doesn't have much dirt racing experience. That's bad news because the two drivers here he's chasing are two of the favorites in Matt Crafting and Stuart Friesen. But Harrison Burton has some confidence tonight. He says the plan is just keep it damage free, make it to the end, and we have the speed to be a top five truck and go on trying to solidify that playoff spot, guys. All right, Alan, thanks a lot. And uh, certainly varying agendas to be sure. So great to be here with you tonight. And I think you can sense the excitement from everyone, even those back in the studio in Charlotte, to Hermie and Alan down in the pits, to us up here in the booth with Michael Waltrip, Phil Parsons, I'm Vince Welch. It is always a great night here at Eldora. And yes, we are two races away from the playoffs. So for that reason, the result tonight is very important. But Michael, when you come here, you almost feel like this race has its own identity, aside from really what it means in the big picture. I mean, this is as good as it gets for me, Vince. The atmosphere, the energy, the excitement these drivers have. I know we're just two races away from the playoffs. I don't care. For the next couple hours, I just want to watch guys scramble and fight for all they're worth and fight they will. We see some crazy racing here. Check out the restarts. The guys will go three, four, even five wide. There's so many differing grooves on this racetrack. You get into the wall with your truck, your night's over, right, Phil? Not here. Not hardly. You're gonna bounce off the wall. You're gonna have contact. Kyle Larson told us a couple weeks ago, he hit the wall 40 times in the last 20 laps on his way to victory. And this is what we saw just a year ago. Chase Briscoe taking Grant Enfinger all the way to the wall to grab the golden shovel. These racers are all about tonight. Winning a race at Eldora, it's iconic, and it's one of the biggest nights of the year. Well, and there were a lot of familiar names there that we looked at, but Phil, this is a, a place, too, where we're going to talk a lot, in all likelihood, about some drivers that maybe some of the fans who watch us on a regular basis aren't as familiar with. Some of those guys that come in just because they get a shot on the dirt at Eldora. Yeah, and some of those guys have had a shot at Eldora, and they've gone to victory lane. You can look at our winners over the first six years here. You see Bubba Wallace. That may have been his first dirt track race ever, and he goes to victory lane here at Eldora. How about Chase Briscoe last year doing that great job? Christopher Bell back in 2050. We know a lot about him now, right? But that was his third ever race here in the Truck Series when he went to Victory Lane. But this also opens up an opportunity for dirt track races all over this country to say, I can go to Eldora and race with NASCAR's best. Here's one of the guys right here, Kyle Strickler. Countless dirt modified wins, probably in the hundreds, a two times national short track champion at Charlotte. He's transitioning now into late models on the dirt, but he's got an opportunity to race here with David Gill in his 54 truck. And his crew chief, oh, by the way, has five track championships here at Eldora, and that's Frankie Kerr. And also another situation for a young man, this is the 03 of Jake Griffin. He came here at 16 years old three years ago and had a top five run driving for Red Horse Racing. He's back here now. This is his 
most recent Truck Series race. He hasn't been here since 2016, but he's gotten an opportunity. He starts in the 18th spot. He's trying to get maybe another top five, maybe even put his name alongside those winners here. It's an opportunity for all these dirt track racers all over the country to say, I want to come and race here at this great racetrack against these NASCAR guys. A lot of opportunities to be sure, including some opportunities to clinch a spot in the playoffs. Uh, Grant Infinger could actually clinch a championship or a, a, the regular season title tonight. Maybe a little bit of a stretch, but it's possible. But for Stuart Friesen and maybe even Matt Crafton to a certain extent, they're vulnerable with two races to go in the playoffs. No doubt. And there's guys like Sheldon Gray. We've talked about Sheldon, an accomplished dirt racer. He's going to be on the gas trying to steal one of those playoff spots away. We've got so many great stories. You've got must winners inside of our top 20 that we know have to go to victory lane if they're going to make the chase. Ben Playoff. Rhodes had the pole here last year and won the first stage till he got in the wall. He's great here. Todd Gill in that very fast truck in practice. The winner could come from anywhere. Yeah, Ben Rhodes, even though he hasn't had great finishing results, he has run well here in the past. A lot of options. It's going to be a fun night tonight. To get it started, let's get the command. And now for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome repping their dirt racing counterparts across the country, the world famous Eldora push truck drivers. Engines are fired, drivers are ready, fans are anxious. The seventh running of the Dirt Derby coming up. Show you everything you said I couldn't be. I became overnight. This for the blood, this is for the tears, this is for my pain and my plight. Two up in, but only one of us is walking out of here tonight. I'm a survivor.
is part of the story of NASCAR racing. The wild skidding and free-for-all atmosphere brought crowds years ago and still brings them now. The green flag sends us to our feet. It opened 65 years ago, and it remains a destination for race fans around the world. This is Eldora. The Gander Outdoors Truck Series is here for the Dirt Derby. On an absolutely spectacular night in Rossburg, Ohio, this half-mile dirt track is the centerpiece of this wonderful facility, and the fans are here in mass. And we're happy to be here to bring it to you as we get ready for tonight's seventh running of the Dirt Derby. And look at the Gander Outdoors track description. Half mile length. That numbers doesn't do this place justice. We're talking grooves for six, seven, eight trucks to go side by side. And they're going to try to use all those grooves tonight. It's dirt and it's going to change all night long. Just take a look at our race analysis. This race will be broken up into three stages. First stage 40, second 50, and the final stage 60. 150 laps, 75 miles. Guys may pit at the end of the first stage. Some may wait till the end of the second stage. But at the end, it's all out. We've had six races here, six different winners. Who is going to add their name to the list tonight in the seventh running of the Dirt Derby here at Eldora? Chase Briscoe, winner last year. Matt Crafton in 2017. And the fans have turned out to see to add their name to the list in 2019 as Briscoe and Crafton start on the front row and the field of 32 forms into the four wide salute. If you've never been here before, I strongly encourage you to put it on your bucket list. It is can't miss. Get ready tonight as 32 trucks will line up and go 150 laps. And let's take a look at the starting lineups led by the two most recent winners, Chase Briscoe and Matt Crafton on the front row. The top five that you see all won their qualifying races earlier today. Hard to pick a favorite out of these top five and even guys behind here showed a lot of speed in practice. Yeah, Todd Golan has had a strong truck here all weekend long. Sheldon Creek, you know he's going to be a factor. And Ross Chastain is driving that Jack Hewitt honor truck. Anything he does doesn't surprise me after this year, for sure. Grant Infinger, you saw he was right there at the finish last year. Austin Hill, already a win this season. Some opportunists. Mike Millar, very good racer. Tyler Ankrum has looked good today as well on the dirt. Ankrum drove off to a big win in that LCQ, so that truck is fast. 32 trucks getting ready for the green, but first we'll check in one more time with our pit reporters, beginning with Hermie Sadler. Well, Vince, most people, including myself, felt like Stuart Friesen would have already won a race this year. He has not. In a mistake last week at Pocono on lap one, put him in a precarious situation as far as the points. Now, the crew chief, Trip Bruce, says Eldor is a little bit different. He relies more on Stewart on how to tune the truck and what to expect during race conditions at night when all the practice and qualifying most, for the most part, is during the day. They feel like they put everything they can into trying to get that victory and cementing an opportunity to race for a championship. We'll see if they can pull it off, Alan. Hermie, Ben Rhodes in the 99 truck is another one of those drivers in a tough points position. He has the ability to lead laps here, just needs the finishes. What he doesn't have is a crew chief who's ever called a race here at Eldora. Matt Noyce, his crew chief, tells me the biggest challenge is keeping up with the racetrack and all its changes. We're going green, guys. Yeah, there's a lot of ch challenges tonight. It begins with Matt Crafton and Chase Briscoe. 
the Dirt Derby underway at Eldora. There's that six wide you were talking about, <laughs> It Mike. didn't take long either, did it? I promise I wasn't overselling it. <laughs> we're probably going to see more than that. As you can tell, some guys like that very bottom lane, as you saw Kyle Strickler down there, and then our leader, Chase Prisco, right out next to the wall. Uh, if you're not familiar with dirt racing, wherever there is moisture on the track, that's going to provide grip. And right now, most of that is up toward the top. But down on the very bottom, there's also some uh, moisture, and you'll see some of the trucks go down to the bottom and maybe find a little grip down there and some speed to go with it. Keep an eye on that four truck of Todd Gillen riding behind the 13 of Johnny Soto already into the fence on lap one. And that doesn't hurt a thing. That truck is just fine. He can still win this race. So don't worry if your favorite driver bounces off the wall. That's not going to knock him out of contention. According to Kyle Larson, he has 39 more times he can do it, right? That's right. But I like I like just burying my grooves here early in this race. You saw Strickler down on the bottom of that 54 truck. Now he's out next to the wall. There's all kinds of different ways to attack this track. And these drivers need to be learning early in the going exactly how their truck drives in different spots on the track. Well, the three drivers that we thought would be the three heaviest favorites are running one, two, three right now, and they're sorting themselves out deep in the field. But we've got a long way to go. We have seen drivers that have looked so good in early portions of the race uh, in previous years here at Eldora end up with lousy finishes, and you would have never thought that they would have ended up that way as you get that great view from the front bumper of Sheldon Creed. Yeah, this is the GMS Chevy of Sheldon Creed. What a great view. We're also going to have a view from his visor cam that's going to give us a lot of great pictures. And how about Johnny Sauter up there in the fourth position? How about there's that visor cam right there, Michael? I love that. And you saw Sauter up high off the turn. His truck was really fast when practice started yesterday. I'm not surprised to see him up front early. It'll be interesting to see if he can figure out this track as it dries out and the groove changes around. But so far, so good for Johnny Sauter. Listen to this and watch all the work that Sheldon Creed's putting in here. Uh, maybe half throttle down the straightaway. Never all the way down. And isn't that fun? If you're on a pavement track doing that, you'd be getting lapped. These guys are racing up at the top five. You saw Johnny Sauter go from the top down now towards uh, the middle of the racetrack, and typically not as much grip there. And you can see the different trucks going around Sauter as he's searching for a little drive off, but he lost positions, dropping from fourth down to seventh. There's that truck that was into the wall earlier. Todd Gillen, he's racing right there with Brett Moffitt in the 24 truck. Moffitt, not much of a dirt racer, he says, but doing a nice job early in the going here. Chase Briscoe, the leader of the race, getting ready to put Mark Smith a lap down in that 38. Come on, of, Mark. A little bit of a block right there. He was trying to run that top groove as well. It closed the door for Chase Briscoe. Mark uh, builds Mach 1 chassis, a wing sprint car guy from Pennsylvania. He's thrilled to be here, and a lot of the posse fans in Pennsylvania excited to see somebody like Mark get a chance at Eldora in the truck. Here comes Stuart Friesen, Phil. He's been closing in our leader, Chase Briscoe. If they caught this traffic, it's like maybe a little bit more versatile with the 52 truck right now. He's able to go down low and make some good time. Remember Chase was saying he wasn't completely uh, pleased with the way his truck was handling in that qualifying race whether or not it was going to be good enough to hold off the field or not. Well, we're a long way from getting the answer to that at Eldora.
back here live at Eldora, high above the racetrack with the man himself, owner Tony Stewart. What does this night mean to you, even after all these years? Because the work you put into this is a direct reflection of your efforts here. Well, it's it's a reflection of a lot of people's efforts. You know, we got Roger Slack and uh, the, the oversees the whole facility, Rob Platfoot that takes care of the racetrack and uh, a great, great staff, push truck drivers and people that, from concessions to everything. We just got a great group of people here and, uh, you know, we're always excited when we get this NASCAR truck race here. It's one of our favorite races of the year. You like watching the race? I do like watching the race, but I uh, I really want to run this race one day as a driver myself. So maybe, uh, maybe sometime before it's over, I'll get a chance to do this and play with these guys a little bit. Maybe someday, Vince. No, we can't wait. That's for sure. That'd be a lot of fun. You know, Tony mentioned Roger Slack and uh, a couple of others as we look at this caution. Watch how close Johnny Sauter gets to the 20 of Landon Huffman. Or uh, freezing, excuse me, not sorry. And, and these trucks, you know, you just can't turn them on a time on dirt. And he's holding his breath, I Whoa. guarantee you right there, guys. That could have been a end of his night. Well, and after the way things ended for him at Pocono last week, first corner, first lap, Friesen couldn't afford something like that to his playoff uh, position, that's for sure. That would have ended his playoff. It oh, would have indeed. Ready for the restart here in stage one. Chase Briscoe out front. That's beautiful, isn't it? Those guys just managing the throttle, slipping those tires. Look at Stewart down there in the very bottom trying to find some of that moisture you were talking about, Vince. Wasn't down there, and he's going to lose that spot to Sheldon Creed in the two truck. Yeah, I think the top way is definitely the fast way around as Creed all the way to the wall. And bounces off the wall. Well, that cushion is uh, leaving you not much room for air. It is all the way to the fence. Doesn't seem like that cushion is as high down here in three and four as it is down here in one and two. They'll continue to creep it up, though. They're going to search for traction all over this place. Good run early for Todd Gillen there. He's heating up Friesen. How about Friesen or uh, Sheldon Creed after that near miss? Vince, this is only the second race back in the truck series for Sheldon Creed with crew chief Jeff Stankiewicz. He joined him last week at Pocono. Got in some trouble early. We're not able to get the finish. They probably deserve. But Jeff told me early today that First practice yesterday, they were not very good at all, but Sheldon did a really good job of giving him feedback, offering suggestions. In the second practice last night, they felt like they had a truck that was capable of winning, and they are one of the trucks, Vince, as we know, that he has to win to qualify for the playoffs. Right now, he is looking good on the racetrack. Yeah, and I like the fact that he and Stankiewicz have worked together here before, and they are familiar with the the dirt they're familiar with uh, working together as crew chief and driver and that's the kind of thing that can pay off for you. Yeah they won the championship in the Ar Arca Menard series last year and again you know they run a couple of dirt track races as a matter of fact their next two races are on the dirt at Springfield and DeCoin. Chase Briscoe last year's winner continues to lead he's led them all so far. Look at this move. Caution is out. The 0 3 Carson or uh, Jake Griffin has gone around, and he's one of the drivers we talked about at the uh, the beginning and a fourth place finish here. And I think he uh, might have had a right, right front flat, fence. I saw some issue. Yeah, you see the yeah. tires down there. You can see some damage with that right front fender. So he either got into another truck or the wall, cut down that right front tire for big things from Griffin tonight. I know he's hoping for big things. Speaking of big things, we saw there our Xfinity biggest movers, Tyler Ingram. That's that's impressive with all the traffic and and tough to get traction. He's able to drive from the back after transferring from the last chance qualifier all the way up inside uh, the top 20 16th right now. They've got a great heavyweight battle for you coming up on Saturday as Brooklyn's unbeaten Adam Kodnetsky takes on Chris Ariola. It's Saturday, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on Fox. You can also see it on the Fox Sports app. Dallin Cavana. And we're down here in the middle of turn one and two where a lot of the crew chiefs are, including Matt Crafton's crew chief, uh, Junior Joyner. Uh, what are you seeing so far down here? Your drivers drop back a little bit. Yeah, you just you can't get stuck on the bottom right here. There's just nothing down there, no moisture. So 
Looks like we're going to be on the bottom again. He's already cussing, so we got a long ways to go. We'll see what happens. we got a really good truck. We've been bad fast all weekend. Menards F-150 has been strong. Guys have done everything right. We just got to be there at right place, right time. A lot of confidence on the radio since practice one, guys. Well, and Matt's been doing a little more dirt track racing uh, to be ready for this particular event. I mean, he won a couple of years ago. He's not just taking it for granted that uh, he's going to be good. He comes, gets out in that dirt car and gets after it. I think he realized that when we started coming here that he needed to be better on dirt. That's why he got him a dirt modified car. And I think that's directly responsible for him going to Big Two Lane here a couple of years ago. Yeah, and he knocked the cobwebs off a couple weeks ago, took his modified up to Kentucky and did some weekend racing. And he said he just loves it. He loves the way it feels on the dirt. And I know he loves that moment. Big win here at Eldora. Crafton led the final 17 laps to win in 2017. One of those that Stuart Friesen thought might have been his. He led the most laps from the pole that year, but Crafton came on late. Bubba Wallace watching. Good to have you with us, Bubba. And uh, he says, if Tony's coming back, he's coming back. <laughs> Good. The more the merrier. Absolutely. That would be awesome to have those two be a part of this show. It's just such personalities. A lot of racer mentality when you think about coming to Eldora. You want to roll up your sleeves and go beat the best. You know, that's the first time I've ever heard Tony talk about wanting to run this race as well. He does such a good job helping with his track preparation, but I would love to see him in a truck out here. I just saw where he won a big sprint car race this past weekend, so still gets it done on the dirt. I'm sure that's a, giving him the itch when he's standing up there watching those guys wanting to be out there with them. I think he's racing more now than ever. Loves that wing sprint car. See the guys rolling around the bottom there, Vince? They're doing that, just trying to get that loose dirt on their tires. It helps them stick better. So they want to go down there and get in that moister area. Good look at that Ross Chastain, Jack Hewitt tribute scheme. And Hewitt's such a popular figure, well, everywhere that there's a racetrack, but especially <laughs> here at Eldora. Wasn't it fun? Great getting, to see Jack here tonight. Fun getting a word with him earlier, right? Yeah. Army asked him if he had time for an interview, and he said, heck yeah. And we were able to talk to him about what it meant to be honored. But check that out. He's yeah. doing his own windows. I was talking to Grant Enfinger. He had one of those sweepers as well. I said, how about that? He said, I can do the truck next to me. Mine's long enough if I need to. <laughs> There's that JW Hunt produce number 45. We've got Ross Chastain on that side of the truck and Jack Hewitt on the other. How about Ross running right now in the eighth spot? What a great job by Ross. Admittedly, not a dirt track racer. Yeah, just uh, right behind him in that 10th position is the three of Carson Hosovar. He's just 16 years old. Well, I was surprised when Phil was talking about Jake Griffin being 20 years old because I saw him yesterday and I thought he was 16 now. <laughs> I mean, that was three years ago. That was three years ago. I wondered how he pulled that off, but that, that makes perfect sense. He's uh, lost a couple of laps, has Jake. There you see Josevar. Nice job early in the race for this three truck that Jordan Anderson has worked so hard to get these trucks competitive and, and now seeing the fruits of his labor pay off with another driver behind the wheel. A little different role for Jordan going from driver to owner. Remember, was it last year he put Ryan Newman in his truck here at Eldora? You know, we talked about the Sprint Car Hall of Famer, Frankie Kerr. He's with Hermie. Crew chief tonight for Kyle Strickland, the 54. Your guy's seventh right now. Well, eighth, what's he telling you? Well, uh, we, we keep getting trapped on the bottom there, and he starts. It's killing us. But we got a long way to go here. We'll uh, work our way up there. Getting stuck on the bottom seems to be a common theme. The drivers don't like it, and the crew chiefs don't like it either. <laughs> Well, the driver can do something about it. The crew chief, he has to just stand there and let his stomach churn. And that's no different. A lot of, a lot of the paved race directs we go to, people don't want to be on the inside, don't want to be in the outside. Same situation here. That's his driver, Kyle Strickler. That's about 50, 60 dirt track races a year between the modified and the late models. There's our man Sauter also running inside the top 10 in that green truck just went by right on Strickler's tailgate there. Sauter. Thought looked really good in practice yesterday. I'm going to see how his truck uh, is able to adapt as the conditions change, but he was really strong yesterday. 
Now they finally got the lineup situated, so we'll get ready for this restart with Chase Briscoe on the outside and Sheldon Creed inside. Stuart Friesen and Todd Gilliland in row two right behind them. Ten to go in stage one. Well, just on the initial start there, it looked like there's a lot more grip on the outside, even on the straightaways. Don't tell Sheldon Creed or Stuart Friesen that. They got to go where they're not. <laughs> At a dirt track, if somebody's not in the lane, you go pick that one out, and you can see Friesen working the low side. Friesen searching the bottom for some of that moisture. The high line is getting it done up top. Friesen can't get in line, though. That's the problem. It's such a parade around the top. You can't get in. See Strickler, he actually missed the bottom, jumped up to the middle of the racetrack, and watched the trucks go by on the outside. That's the bright red numerals on Ben Rhodes' number 99 truck. Rhodes looks fast early. Friesen loses another spot to Crafton, and then a little bit of contact as Friesen tries to get up on the wall. That was Ross Chastain trying to close the door on him, but Friesen snuck in. As Ross is going to be able to get up in front of Hosevar in the three truck. There's Ben Rose, that 99 truck. What a good looking truck, too. He's going to have that sponsorship at Michigan as well. Looks just like that 28 car Davey Allison and Larry McReynolds made so famous. Sure does. That threesome running seventh, eighth, and ninth now with six to go here in stage one. There's Grant Enfinger, the 98. He's our regular season points leader right now. Racing side by side with Strickler. What a great battle here coming off of turn four. Strickler found out about a week and a half ago that he was going to get this opportunity. He said he talked to David Gillen, and he's known Gillen since 2006. But uh, they talked a long time ago about maybe getting together once Gillen got his team formed. And Kyle was thrilled to death to get that call from David about the opportunity to run the truck here at Eldora. Talking about Johnny Sauter early, he's lost a couple of positions, and you can see the 17, Tyler Ankrum trying to grab another one from him. Really fast truck is the 17, started out back and has been able to charge up through the field, making passes that look very difficult to me today, Phil, with the way the track is coming in. Hosevar gets seven, Rhodes is right there in eighth, and Chastain has been shuffled back to ninth. Really impressive run for Hosevar. I think his dirt track experience goes back to quarter midgets. Been running some Arthur Menards races this year. Couple of laps remaining here in this first stage. Chase Briscoe continues to lead at the front, but Todd Gillen has closed it down to about a half a second advantage. They'll get the signal one to go here in stage one. Briscoe trying to hold off Todd Gillen. What an impressive early run here for the floor of Gillen. And also the 24 right behind Gillen of Moffitt. Another guy that's not a lot of dirt experience. And Chase Briscoe wins stage one here at Eldora. First stage is complete. Last year's race winner, Chase Briscoe, back in a truck. And the result is the same. He's out front at Eldora.
Chase Briscoe doesn't run for the championship, so no points earned for him in stage one, but Todd Gilliland, Brett Moffitt, Sheldon Creed, right on down the list, the top 10 receiving points. As they get ready for pit stops here, it's uh, certainly different than what we would normally see at our uh, typical asphalt or concrete tracks. The first 16 in line will be the first to come down and they will pit on the left side of the pit lane. And if then, you choose to come down pit yes, road. Yes, if you choose to. And then uh, the next 16, the rest of the field will come and pit alongside on the right-hand side of the pit lane. And the way you came on pit road is the way you will leave pit road and line up behind the trucks that decide to stay on the racetrack. And we've had a number of those, Vince. A lot of guys decided to stay out. I like that. We're seeing strategy early. It'll be interesting to see. This is a different tire this year. What kind of where they get, if there's speed in new ones, how will this play out? There you see some of the guys that stayed out on the track. Chase Briscoe, Matt Crafton, Stuart Friesen, Ross Chastain. We'll talk about the different strategies that could be employed here. Yeah, we talked about Chase Briscoe winning the second stage, so it's not a situation where if you don't have track position, you know, because you stayed out at the end of the second stage, you can't win the race because Chase Briscoe told, uh, showed us that we could. You could see the 51 overheating a little bit here. Obviously, you can see the grill screens and the fact that they get clogged, clogged up with mud. There's, that damage is pretty common to see. We've had a few guys just catch a rut and tear up the front uh, valence there. Love all the drivers uh, doing the interior work, getting yeah. their windshield the clean with the Swiffers. Swiftering, right? Down to Allen. And Todd Gillen had a great first stage there. Started eighth, used the outside line to get up there to second, and really just needed to find consistency. A lot of talk on the radio just about what works, what doesn't. If he misses a lap, you can see the fuel in the truck right there. He says he's just a little bit tight getting in and then loose on exit. He's just learning while he makes laps out there, wants some wedge adjustment and air pressure for those tires. You can see him cleaning the windshield. A lot of complaints about people not being able to see already, Herbie. Well, Alan Brett Moffitt reported to his crew chief, Jerry Baxter, that his truck was better the longer they ran. However, he was, wants a little bit more forward drive, so they just added some wedge to the left rear to try to keep the left rear tire down into the racetrack. Yeah. And uh, a little bit tight in the center, but really that forward bike, especially off turn two, is really what the 24 is looking for. So four tires and wedge and fuel for the 24. Well, let's see if we can uh, visit with Todd Gillen at a terrific run there in stage one. Hey, Todd Gillen, this is Phil Parsons from Boys up in the Fox booth. You got a copy? Yep, I got this. Todd, as, as well as uh, running well, extremely well on the racetrack, you're doing a really nice job cleaning inside of that windshield. So even during these uh, caution situations, your, your work's not done. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think I'm kind of dusting my eyes. It's kind of crazy. The helmet band just keeps blowing it in. And, uh, that's how it goes. It's just dirt uh, going everywhere. So. That's really cool. Um, really fun to run up front, be able to make some passes on the right lane. Hopefully, get the stadium deployed up front uh, one more spot at the end. All right, buddy. Great job so far. Keep it rolling. Thank you. There's some repairs being done to that car and or that truck, and, and they even do windows. They do a little bit of everything. We'll sweep it up, get it cleaned up, and we'll have stage two when we come back.
What a beautiful view of Eldora. The Gander Outdoors Truck Series. The seventh running of the Dirt Derby, and uh, maybe are you trash talking with your Swiffer? Is that a threatening move? Is that? I think they're jousting. <laughs> Back off. <laughs> the teammates there. A lighter moment as they caught a breath, and the others came to pit road. You get three sets of tires, so one that, uh, of course, you started the race on, which you had to finish your qualifier, the tires you finished your qualifier on. And then you get two sets in the pits. And, uh, but varying degrees of strategy and whether or not you're going to use those tires or fuel, whatever the case, you can only put on tires and fuel or add fuel at the end of the stage breaks. Got another one coming up in 50 laps. Interesting to see. I'm going to watch this strategy and see how it plays out. What these guys on pit road think tires are worth. We get a picture of that here with some of the good trucks that pitted on that caution or that stage break and and the ones that stayed out on those older tires like Chase Briscoe, Matt Kraft and Friesen you see up there. Yeah, I think it's going to be uh, probably safe to say that the guys that stayed out this time will be in at the end of the stage two and the guys that pitted on this time have that option. They can make it on fuel to the end of the race, so they have the option of coming back to pit road or staying out for track position. I like right now, Phil, I like staying out at that stage break. Passing has been so difficult. They're ringing the top. Will the track change as that bottom groove open up? But so far, right out next to the wall seems to be the preferred line and, and makes uh, passing at a premium. The stage is 40 laps, 50 laps, and the final stage, 60 laps. We saw the 51 overheating, and let's find out uh, the details there, Alan. Yeah, they're just trying to assess how bad it is right now. We saw all the water spraying out of there, and they're just getting constant updates about the engine temperature, 250 and above right now, a lot of mud on the grill, stuck back there in traffic. They don't know how bad it is or how bad it, it will be, how, you know, potentially terminal. They just don't know yet. Uh, crew chief Rudy Fugel being pretty quiet at the moment, but just a lot of frustration on the radio right now. I think it'll be fine. These things are used to running a little temperature. Saw a little water spurt now. It's probably not that big of a deal, but we'll see. Certainly get your attention, won't it? Sure will. And it probably wasn't pushing any water out when he went by pit road. Just when he stopped and shut the engine off, that's when it started pushing water out. Chase Briscoe in that silver 27. He's led them all so far. And Matt Crafton. Alongside row two, Ross Chastain and Stuart Friesen. Kyle Strickler and Grant Infinger in row three. Stage two is green. Ross Chastain is going to take advantage of restarting on the high side and the three wide, maybe four. Strickler to the bottom with Friesen just above him. Can Strickler make it stick? No, not quite. See if maybe it's a little bit better down here at this end of the racetrack. Trying to do a slide job. It's not going to happen. He's not going to get in front of Friesen. Well, an infinger was right there being stingy with the space as well. He's trying to slide it in another hole, but they, those holes keep closing up on it. On board with Stuart Friesen looking back at Grant Infinger. Man, I bet it's so hard to be patient. These dirt racers, they like to get with it and go in a hurry, and this race is pretty short. 
and having patience not to mistime your slide jump, that could injure whole evening, and these guys are really doing a nice job right now. From the front bumper of Sheldon Creed, it's Brett Moffat in the 24. Moffat trying to run the bottom, and look how far down Brett Moffat is now, and Creed running the middle. Moffat slides up in front of him. Creed straight to the bottom. There you see Ben Rhodes running middle of the track, moving up. The 44 of Jeffrey Abbey. Jeffrey was in the top 10, but that went away quickly. Slips back to 12. And some of these trucks have made a pit stop, have fresh tires. There's Ben Rhodes, the 99 following the two of Creed, the 24 of Moffitt. Moffitt and Creed. Ben Rhodes is there as well, and uh, Moffitt definitely into the wall a little bit, but uh, that's a regular occurrence. Very slight contact, I think. He didn't lose a spot either. He was able to keep his momentum up and held off Creed. You can see there as they race off turn four. Sometimes you got to use that wall to straighten you out. <laughs> yeah. To be your friend, this guy has had it going on tonight, Hermie. You know, Michael, we mentioned the, the 27 does not run every week the crew chief is bud hayfley he does not crew chief very much this is the first race back on top of the box this year he was one of the few crew chiefs that was very outspoken about tires it's worth noting that this year's tire compound is a little bit softer than in years past but he told me that they felt like getting tires later in the race last year was helpful to them going to victory lane so they feel like having tires at the end of the race tonight or at least later in the race and some of their competitors could potentially be advantage for them again tonight. We'll see if it works out. Well, there's several counting on that strategy. Chase Briscoe continues to lead. He's led them all. We're going to break, but you won't miss a thing. Going to keep on trucking from Eldora. You've been watching it during the commercial break. Harrison Burton in the 18. 
Went around over in turn two, just off the exit of turn two, was running eighth at the time. That looked kind of strange, didn't it? Just yeah. stepped out really late. Usually at that point, you're down the straightaway, all right. But fortunately for Harrison, as he got it cranked up and drove off, the, the leader was just behind him, so he stayed on the lead lap. Well, another one that uh, is overheating, and that's the 24 Moffitt. Throwing the water to that one, Phil. Yeah, he needs to get going here pretty soon. The pace truck is coming off for turn four. I don't think they're going to make it. It looks like they're going to at least sacrifice one lap. You see the field passing by Vince. That's a certainly concern for this team. You think maybe I didn't? I didn't feel like that. I'd heard a lot about overheating down the garage. These guys, have, these truck series teams, have been here for a few years. They seemingly have that all figured out. But you can see they were putting water in it. That's what those hoses are for. And Hermes with the crew chief for Ross Chastain. That's Phil Gould. You guys won last week. We're used to seeing you guys up front on most weekends, but Ross, first time ever on dirt, and you guys knocked the nose off the truck yesterday, and here you are in third. You got a shot to win this thing? I don't know. We're just trying to mind our P's and Q's and stay out of trouble. Ross has done a heck of a job for not ever driving on dirt. And uh, we're just, this is new for me too. We're just trying to stay out of trouble and, and keep it out of the fence. And hopefully we can uh, stay up front all night and uh, have a good finish. These guys are pressing so far. On the 24, guys, uh, Brett Moffitt, as soon as the caution came out, he mentioned that his water temperature was about 250. His crew chief, Jerry Baxter, said, turn the fan on right now, which he did. And they came down pit road, cleaned the grill, did all that, but apparently uh, needing to add water to the 24. So it was a slight concern for Moffitt, but I don't think he or the crew chief thought it would get this bad that would cause him this much trouble. Yeah, they've uh, lost a couple of laps during this stop. Great to hear from Phil Gould about his driver, Ross Chastain, and, and the Jack Hewitt throwback scheme. <laughs> J.W. Hunt on there, familiar to many race fans around the country. Yeah, we talked to Jack earlier, and so appreciative of Al Neese and, uh, and Cody Epaw. Who the guy, Cody Epaw was really the guy that was behind this, and Al Neese said, yeah, let's do it. Talk to Al down in the garage area, talk to Jack. They were so excited. Jack telling some great stories down there. You know, you heard Phil Gould, Ross's crew chief, say they're going to mind their P's and Q's. You can tell they haven't run a lot of dirt, because generally on dirt, you don't mind your P's or Q's. <laughs> you just hang it out and go for it. And last week, after Pocono, Ross Chastain said, racing dirt is for farming and racing is for asphalt's for racing cars. People took that wrong, I think. But you got to know, Ross Chastain is a, he is a farmer. farmer so he is a farmer. He only ever knew that, <laughs> that the dirt was for farming, and he's done a great job farming and obviously a great job behind the wheel of that truck. Well, we were brought to caution by the 18. Let's get an update with Alan. Yeah, he just uh, Harrison Burton, the 18 there, just apologized to his team, said he just lost it. No damage. All four tires are still up. The team just telling him, be calm. A lot of these cars are going to pit after the next stage. They already pitted, so they will pass a lot there. Just stay calm. Don't get left. Burton restarts 22nd. Chase Briscoe in the silver 27 continues to lead the way. He's led them all, all 61 so far. Matt Crafton is chasing in second. And that's Stuart Friesen in the 52, challenging for second. Yeah, Friesen got the outside on the 88 of Crafton, and he's going to make that pass. Yeah, the top is the place to be. There's no question not seeing anybody make any ground up down on the bottom. Some have tried it. Yeah, many have tried it. You can't blame them for trying it, but it's just not working. You're just not satisfied to ride there in eighth or tenth or whatever. You need to make something happen. And the bottom is the only place to try to do that. You know, when that bottom comes in, somebody will catch it quickly and make some good progress down there. So it's worth a try every now and then. Oh, a round big collection. Boy, here's the burden. I think got slowed down and slid right through that. He was on the high side. You can see there's most of our truck. Austin I think, Wayne Self in there. There's Eckes. I think more damage to the 16 of Austin Hill than about anyone else I saw. Oh, Cole what about Gilliam. The eight of Gilliam. Yeah, him too. You saw him. He just rolled by the 16 of Austin Hill. What a struggle it's been for that team there. The last couple of weeks he had engine trouble at Kentucky and then lost a clutch last week early at Pocono. And that, that's terminal, I think. I don't, I don't know that they can get that 16 back in competition. They get collected in a hurry on the dirt. Christian Eckes around and several others involved. Coming back to Eldora after this.
This week on NASCAR Race Up. If you didn't think radioactive could get any juicier, just wait till we toss in some right turns from the glen. And don't miss Chad Canal, Jamie McMurray, and Ricky Craven in studio to help break it all down. Plus, Todd Gordon, Joey Logano's crew chief, sits down with Larry Mack to reflect on his first cup win as we get ready to head to Michigan. That's all this week on NASCAR Race Up. Weeknights, 6 p.m. Eastern, only on FS1 going to be a lot to talk about on Race Hub and there's going to be a lot to talk about the rest of this night <laughs> as well because it is heating up as we just collected many and uh, some the damage likely to be terminal. Yeah, I think it started with Christian Eckes maybe making contact with somebody that's the Christian in a 51 truck and it just clogged up the racetrack and they all tried to go around the high side and then just there he is right there he was racing with the 17 of Ankrum what an amazing job by Johnny Sauter yeah just bumped him a little bit and then drove on by and here they come they're all committed to the top anyway Michael and the top clogged up uh, you know and like it happens so many times you see Eckes starts it there around he goes he gets bumped there a bump here drives off he didn't get in any major damage at all and he's able to continue on the lead lap. Eight trucks fighting for room that one lane around the top of the racetrack. 21 to go here in stage two as they try to get them all lined up again and there's the damage on Eckes truck. We can win like that Bill. Absolutely. You just can't spin out in front of the field again. <laughs> can't take that chance. This is the 16 of Austin Hill. This is not a place that crew chief Scott Zipidelli is going to go on vacation. It uh, didn't sound like it. I no. talked to him down in the garage and he said, her chief's kind of frustrated here. Not a lot of changes. You know, you kind of got what you got. The driver needs more forward bike. We'll play with the gas for If the brakes aren't exactly right, well, we only run about half our brakes anyway. You're going to have to figure that out. <laughs> and there he is looking over the damage. Saw his last three finishes, had that top five finish at Chicago, and then two finishes outside the top 30. Yeah, and this. That's a shame too, Phil, because they had good speed yesterday. Felt like he could really be competitive, but uh, doesn't look like that's going to happen. Saw the 18 get collected as well. How serious is that, Alan? Yeah, it looks bad. Uh, a lot of damage on the back right of the truck. You can see there a lot on the front. Right as soon as it happened, Harrison Burton came over the radio and said we were just demolished. They came in. They tried to put some Marabon on there. They went out to see if it would still run. Harrison Burton said there's just a weird noise in the engine, a belt hitting somewhere. So they brought him back in, had the hood up, just trying to assess what the damage exactly is uh, over the radio. They said we need to make a few more laps to get as many laps completed and gain a few points before they pull it in back if they can't go any further. Yeah, remember coming into this race, Burton was only 13 points out of that last playoff uh, playoff spot. Not inconceivable that he could have made up those 13 over the course of, if not just this race, then the final regular season race in Michigan. Yeah, on the strength of three, uh, uh, three top five finishes in a row coming into here, but unfortunately now it looks like he's going to be back into a must win situation when we go to Michigan next week. That's the way he's sort of lived the last month or so uh, of this season, knowing that he's going to have to do something special. And then what happened in Pocono, it made it possible if he got through here, okay, he could point his way in, but that's not going to happen. Chase Briscoe and that silver 27 last year's winner has led them all from the pole here tonight. Vince I wonder if he's start, starting to think I'm not going to pit get back in all that mess. I'm just, just going to stay up here. Can't say that I blame him. Stuart Friesen will restart along on the inside. We'll take the green with 18 to go and we're going to crack it up at Eldora. into the wall in turn one. He ran about halfway up the wall and I think passed two in the pass, process. Passed two <laughs> trucks, bounced off the wall and passed two trucks immediately. Sometimes that wall gives you some momentum. Watch this, watch the 54 as he goes into turn one here. Maybe a little bit of contact from Infinger, gets sideways, bounces it off the right rear a couple of times. And watch the run he gets from that <laughs> point on, unbelievable. Freed and Strickler, Strickler. 
has been fun to watch tonight. Right now runs in the sixth position and Freed is seven. And if nothing else, these two guys, they will go at it. They, <laughs> there is no let up in either one of these two, Strickler or Creed. We talked to Strickler during our uh, qualifying races show and just so happy to be here and so appreciative for the opportunity to be here. And uh, you, you, you could, you, little flat tire there on that 34. Duck it around, he goes. That's Mason Massey. He's up in the groove right now. That has to bring out the caution flag, and it does. And it does bring out the caution. No change at the front. Is anybody going to unseat Chase Briscoe at Eldora? Welcome back to Eldora. This is Trip Bruce, the crew chief for Stuart Friesen. You guys are burning this computer up behind me and asking a lot of questions. So what's uh, what's up here? Uh, we're just looking at strategy and what we're going to do when the next stage break comes out. Uh, I'm not sure yet what it is. Um, You're not sure or you just don't want to tell us yet? Both. But <laughs> I mean, the obvious is to get this Orange County uh, Fairgrounds Speedway truck to Victory Lane and it was, this would be the best place to do it at. So. That's what we're working on. Uh, is, it, is it possible? Do you think if you stayed out, you'd be okay on fuel and tires? I'm not sure about that. I'd be more sure about the tires than the fuel. But, I mean. And Tripp's a good guy, but he's looking me right in the eyes and telling me a bunch of lies. Back to the booth. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a veteran crew chief. Yeah, that's I mean, what they're supposed to be. he's got he's got he's got nine laps to go till the till the stage ends. He, he knows what he's going to do. He just won't tell Hermie. And I, but I just think he was his facial expressions. He's like, Hermie, I'm not telling you. I'm going to say words, <laughs> but I'm not telling you. Hey, watch the 54 of Kyle Strickler yeah. here. Yeah. Get up off the wall. Now watch after he gathers it up, ends up passing two trucks. He'll pass the two right the and the 99. Maybe we need to bounce off the wall more and get that run off the corner. I mean, he was wrecked, and he hit the wall, and it fixed everything. <laughs> well, the cushion's all the way to the wall in one, yeah. so they're going up well, all the way He was up above through. the wall, I think. <laughs> That's fun to watch. The closing laps of stage two. And there's been a lot of excitement behind Chase Briscoe, but not much up around him. Briscoe has put a dominating performance out there so far. He's led them all. Let's see if... 
Stuart Friesen can give him a run on this restart in the final laps of stage two. Boy, Matt Crafton really wanted to take advantage of that outside second row start and try to block Friesen out, but he didn't, wasn't able to do it. Now he's racing with Chastain side by side. It is slick where Chastain is running and in finger. Stricker, Strickler and uh, Crafton on that higher line get by both of them. How about that Strickler now moving up to the fourth spot. Sheldon Creed is around. It's yeah, fired up and yeah. as we told you before just because you spin around doesn't mean it's going to automatically bring out the caution on the dirt. We've seen examples of that on multiple occasions. Yeah he has plenty of room now. He's about a straightaway ahead of Chase Briscoe with just a handful of laps left in the stage. So he'll be fine to stay on the lead lap. That could be a strategy changer for that team. You have to adapt your strategy when something changes. Your circumstances change and his obviously went for a spin. Yeah he was seventh at the time of that spin so he lost a ton of track position did Creed. Christian Eck is a little bit slow on the bottom running very low in that 51 there you see Ankrum he came to pit road during our most recent caution just for a chassis adjustment I think Michael and it'd be interesting to see if they decide to come back you're unable to change tires on the normal green flag situation only at the stage break unless you have a damaged tire. The 33 of Mike Millar. He has done a great job up in the seventh spot. He was the World of Outlaws late model champ last year. Expected that he would run well, but it's taken him a little bit of time to get up into the top 10. We'll see if he can continue to climb. Yeah, just solid movement up towards the top 10. It got a hard race going there with Dipple in the 0 2 and Gillen in the 4. Oh, Gillen moved up before he was clear was able to make it work. What a battle this is inside the top 10. Couple of laps remaining here in stage two. Battling for that position eight ninth. Gilliland just ahead of them in seventh. Tyler Dipple with a nice run tonight inside the top 10. This battle for this stage win. We have one to go here to the end of stage two. Briscoe won stage two last year as well and of course went on to win the race and so far he has put forth a dominating performance. He has led them all so far. Stuart Friesen down on the bottom trying to challenge but to no avail as Briscoe wins stage two. Great points day for Friesen and Crafton second third here in the second stage. You know, Chase Briscoe was one of the trucks that stayed out at the end of stage one. I think if I got enough fuel as hard as it is to pass, I think I stay out again. I agree. You got to keep it pointed the right direction or it's going to be a long night. Sheldon Creed trying to do it.
Stuart Friesen came into the night on the playoff bubble, so he needs the points, and he has earned the most, along with Matt Crafton tonight, protect himself, ready to secure a playoff, the eighth and final playoff spot. What a, what a difference a week makes, huh, for Stuart Friesen? How about that? The least points last week and the most so far this week. What are we going to do? I'm telling you, if I, if I thought I had enough fuel to get to the end, I think I stay out. It's so hard to pass here. We know everyone that pitted at the end of stage one. We know they can make it, and we got to believe that most of them will stay out. Yeah, but Chase Briscoe has nothing to lose. I mean, he's at not all. working for at points all. here. But Stuart Friesen's got a lot to lose. If he would happen to run out of fuel, I mean, he's on the playoff bubble. He can't here. afford to lose all of those playoff positions, but he's going to stay out. They just like rolled that. the dice. How yeah, about they that? Did. I like it, though. I do, too. I'm really surprised that Chase Briscoe came to pit road. It has to just come down to a fuel mileage concern. Let's uh, get what they're thinking here with the 27 and the 52 from Hermie. Yeah, Vince, the 27, the truck is too loose, especially the longer they run on forward drive. But Hayfley said they'll put tires on, obviously fuel, tighten the truck up now. As far as the 52, the crew chief, Trip Bruce, told Stuart Friesen on the backstretch, he said, if the 27 comes, follow the 27 down pit road and Stuart Friesen from the cockpit said I want to stay on the racetrack and go for it and crew chief Trip Bruce said 10-4 save all the fuel you can and down here at the end of pit road I'm looking at the 88 of Matt Craft and everything ago going according to plan the plan was run up front collect as many stage points as possible and pit after stage two his crew chief junior joiner told me they're feeling good. They're not going to make any adjustments. Just put four tires on it. Matt Crafton being conservative in those first two stages, not pushing it too hard. They believe they have a truck that can win this race, guys. Well, Check, uh, radio with uh, Stuart Friesen. Won't we uh, find out what he's thinking? We obviously saw him stay out. Hey, Stuart, it's Waltrip and the boys. Uh, can you put down your Swifter and talk to us for a minute? <laughs> well, you know I'm a big fan. You got a lot of fans here pulling for you. Every now and then you got to take a chance. Columbus took a chance. Look what it got him. What did you think about your decision there to come to pit road or not? Well, uh, I'll let you know here in uh, 75 laps. But uh, we got a good truck, really good long run truck. After a couple laps, it's rolling nice. So uh, appreciate all these people here cheering for us and uh, everybody back home. Uh, appreciate them all. We'll try our best for you all tonight. Well, that's the ultimate either win or go home decision right there. I hope it works out for you. Look at these fans. How cool of a night is this? Can you tell folks that you race with all up the Northeast Coast and into Canada how fun this is? Yeah, this is, uh, this is an event like none other. Uh, so privileged to be a part of it. And uh, it, it's so cool. And if you're, uh, you're sitting at home and never been here before, uh, next year you better make a plan to get here. <laughs> all right, buddy. Appreciate you. Have fun. Thanks, boys. Hey, Mike, you know, it was America that Columbus discovered. And he's Canada. Uh, well, he, he's heard the story, though. <laughs> <laughs> they, do they talk about that in the Canadian history? I don't know. I don't know if they do or not. I <laughs> yeah. uh, wonder if he was thinking uh, Columbus who? Uh, <laughs> a night you won't forget, that's for sure.
is part of the story of NASCAR racing. The wild skidding and free-for-all atmosphere brought crowds years ago and still brings them now. The green flag sends us to our feet. Who's gonna get that golden shovel? Two stages down, one to go. Chase Briscoe has had the dominant truck tonight. He's led them all, but he won't lead them all because he came to pit road at the end of stage two. Stuart Friesen stayed out. How big of a gamble is it for Friesen? Right decision or wrong decision? I think you have to lean on the crew chief for this decision. He gave Stuart an option. So if the 27 stays out, Stewart's going to stay out. And Stewart said, I can win this race if I stay out. I don't care what he does. He has to know whether that's a calculated gamble or not, if they have enough fuel or if it's a real chance. And he told him to save all he can. So we'll see how this plays out. I love the gamble. I love taking this opportunity. Stewart freezing right now precariously close to that bubble line, but he knows that some of his competitors had trouble. Harrison Burton was the closest below the bubble line. He's already had trouble. I love the I love the aggressiveness. Hopefully it'll work out for him. Remember Chase Briscoe won this race last year. He won stage two and, and restarted from the 13th spot at the end of stage two and went on to win this race. But I think we had a little bit different racetrack last year than we do this year. And a little bit different tire. Just seems like passing's harder this year. So Stewart was told to, 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 to do whatever the 27 did. So if the 27 stays out, I think Stewart says, well, I must have enough fuel to stay out if, if he's gonna stay out. So I'm staying out. I think I can win this race by doing so. Cushion up against the wall. There is not much room. The high line has been the fast way around here. That's for sure, but not much room once you get up there. It is up against the fence, especially in turn one. Well, who's going to add their name to the list? It all began in 2013 with Austin Dillon and then Bubba Wallace, the surprise winner in 2014. Christopher Bell led 106 laps and won it in 2015. In 2016, Bobby Pierce led the most laps, but it was C. Bell. And then 2017, how about Matt Crafton? 2018, Chase Briscoe. What a finish we had a year ago. I wonder if it's going to stock up that way this year. Couldn't get any closer. No L doubt. Larson in 2016. That's but, right. Uh, Bell. Bell was 2015. Larson 2016. It's like Chase Briscoe. Missed those two guys here. We might add that uh, not only did they work with us last year on the broadcast, but we like seeing them out there on the racetrack. <laughs> For sure. Too. What about Marler in that 33 yeah. truck? Right up inside the top five. This is a great story. Yeah, Chase Briscoe is going to restart from the 12th spot. He's well, obviously the highest running guy that came to pit road because he led the led the field off of pit road that's as a, they held their spots. It's about where he restarted the final stage a year yeah, ago, within, right? Within one spot. Here's a look at Marler's uh, bio and of course that World of Outlaws championship last year in the late models. Going somewhere to race tomorrow as are a lot of these short track racers. It's the weekend and it's time to get your 
gloves on and go after it. Going to go to Wisconsin right after this race. Going to take off to Wisconsin to run a late model race. And he's just uh, one of the examples of well, one of the reasons we enjoy this race so much. We get to see some of the drivers and racers that we don't see on a regular basis. What about Mike? He's watched the truck series probably most of his since we've been racing. And there he is up in the top five against some of these stars. This is, this is so cool to see for him. Stuart Friesen will restart as the control vehicle with Ross Chastain inside. The final stage of the Dirt Derby underway at Eldora. Gilliland shooting to the bottom. Marler three wide up the middle on the back straightaway. Chastain struggled a little bit on that restart. Marler's going to get by him. Now Chastain's going to fight back, trying to get back underneath him. That's Marler in the black truck, middle of your screen. It's a great job by Gilliland on that restart. He went to the bottom and then was able to come up to the top in front of the others, and he went to second. Oh. And around goes Chastain. Right in front of most of the field. That was, I think everybody got through that without significant damage maybe some contact but looked to be anything significant i got up to 360 and then i started uh, 720 i think i saw him <laughs> i got into the eight <laughs> before he finally came to a stop so what a ride that was yeah. for ross chastain on the back i know chase briscoe you see a little bit of damage to the front and the rear of chase briscoe but i'm not even sure that's enough damage to bring him to pit road well, he's up on the bottom maybe just disputing the positioning Let's see what happens to Chase in the middle of the screen there. There were four wide as they got to him. Shipley did a great job in that blue 80 truck getting by. And so did Chase Briscoe. That's an incredible job. He didn't get much damage there. I think Briscoe. Watch right side of your screen. Watch the 80 of Shipley. Turn hard left. Look at Enfinger on the brakes hard. Looks like Shelton Creed got by fine as well. I think Briscoe ended up getting into the back end of Enfinger there in that 98. But watch. And see where this begins. I didn't see Chastain any, up off. I didn't see any contact, and there no. was no contact. No. Just a little bit too hard on the yep. throttle. And look at the driving jobs these guys in the back do. Hostavar back there, maybe the most damage. Ankrum did a great job. Creed did a great job. Here we go with Creed. Let's see what this looks like. Because the 45 is going to spin right in front of the zero two, and he stops. Down shift and get out of there. You could hear some contact, but I think just about everybody got through there without certainly not as bad as it could have been, that's for sure. Johnny Sauter gets by in that 13 truck against Shipley. Dipple on the high side. I tell you, a lot of people made contact, but not very hard contact, it didn't look like. And uh, the caution laps play into the hand a little bit of Stuart Friesen in that 52. Everybody that stayed out there like Stuart Friesen did. We're saluting NASCAR here saying, I think I'm in this position. That's why this isn't uniform. They're trying to all say, I was here, but the caution <laughs> flag came out and now NASCAR has some sorting to do. But it's it's nice, nice late race, four wide salute. <laughs> well, while they sort it out, we'll pay a bill or two coming back to Eldora.
Hey, coming up on Saturday, a big doubleheader, Major League Baseball, the Yankees and the Red Sox, always big when they get together, and the Angels and the Indians. All starts at 12.30 Eastern, 9.30 Pacific on FS1, the Fox Sports app. Coming to one to go here for stage three. Hey, you got to come prepared when you come to the dirt track. Alan. And I'm down here with Todd Gilliland's crew chief, Todd Gilliland, in second place right now. What's impressing you of your driver right now and what he's doing up there? Well, he's doing a really good job. Um, I mean, his strategy's working out. I was a little concerned there when we got back in traffic, but uh, he got in the wall there a little bit in that last uh, run, got the steering wheel off a little bit. It's hurt us some. Uh, but where we need to be, we only have 28 green flag laps on our tires from that sec first second to the second. So we're sitting in a good spot. It's our time. It's uh, it's all lining up for us. We'll see what happens. Todd Gill in great position right now. Uh, by the way, Wes, he hit the wall on lap two as well. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been in the wall a lot. Here's one more look at the uh, melee that brought out the caution. Again, with Ross Chastain going around about uh, three or four times. <laughs> look at Ben Rhodes. He slid right through there. The whole world stopped in front of those racers. Well, those two on that front row, Friesen and Gilliland, they are in desperate need of a win. Can one of them close the deal tonight at Eldora? Yeah, how about Dipple running in the fourth spot in the 0-2 truck? That'd be a real playoff changer, wouldn't it? Ooh. Sure would. Marler's still in there. There you are, four wide. Ran in bigger. Two top five finishes, two starts here, making some good ground on the bottom right there and in that 98 truck. Chase Briscoe creeping back into the picture as well. That's Briscoe there alongside Sauter making the pass for position. And Strickler has gone around. Oh, and Briscoe and Sauter are involved, still trying to keep it rolling in the right direction. The caution obviously is out. Look at the left front of Sauter's truck. Oh. That'll end his night. Yeah, There's a tie rod or something broke there, isn't it, Michael? Yeah, that'll. Wow. So Johnny Sauter will limp it in, and Kyle Strickler, even though he had gone around, it looks to be rolling well enough to continue. A couple of trucks in three and four, and then a couple more in one and two about the same time. So quite a few trucks on the lead lap. We're showing 20 trucks on the lead lap. I think Johnny Sauter will will be on pit road for an extended period of time repairing that left front probably tie rod. Devin Dotson you saw just go by in the 32 was one of those involved. Oh three running the wall and the Strickler just went around. Well Sauter hadn't wrecked yet. So there's more action. Yeah. There. Let's watch the green truck in the middle. That's Johnny Sauter. Side by side, that's, that's Chase Silver Briscoe, Briscoe right on the inside. So there's Strickler going around, but doesn't make any contact with Sauter. But we're just going to keep it. Uh, well, we lose the sight of Sauter as he goes out of the picture there. But he looks like he was getting sideways as he left turn two. Jennifer like Joe Cobb getting spun around. OK, so about half the field was involved well, in separate incidents on one lap. Yeah, Dodson. There you see the Sauter trouble. Yeah, Tyler Dipple, the 0-2, was around right in front of Johnny, and then you see Chase Briscoe trying to get through there as well, and that that's, did what, that's what did the damage to the left front. Well, you see Johnny Sauter's results. This is not the place that he comes to, uh, to to find a happy time. This is not a happy night for Johnny, and it rarely is when he comes to Eldora, admittedly not in his wheelhouse. Simply incredible numbers, though, that, that he could be have that much trouble it's such a great racer Johnny Sauter is short track guy you'd think he'd fall right into that this discipline but he just hasn't got but, but had a solid run going tonight that was in a great position how about uh, our leader Hermie yes yeah, Stuart Friesen obviously close on fuel so these caution laps are really helping the 52 but want to get Michael and Phil's opinion of this as well one thing that I've been watching that Stuart never said and but I'm sure he thought about it his ability to be up front and control these restarts at this racetrack, the last couple of restarts have been crucial. We've heard crew chiefs, especially the beginning part of the race, complain about their driver being stuck on the bottom of the racetrack and losing a lot of position on restarts. So track position important everywhere. But Stewart so far, starting up front, up on that top side, has been able to get that 
launch he needs to run the line he needs and he's been able to pretty much come off turn two with smooth sailing so far. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't had that all night either, and he knew how important that would be. And this is just an example of that launch that he's talking about. You give a racer like Stuart Friesen with the experience he has on tracks like this, control of the game. That's what he wanted. He said, I want the ball, coach. I want to put it in my corner, and I'll control this race all the way to the checkered flag. And now part of his controlling it is timely shutting that engine off and coasting. But I got to tell you, Phil, I don't know if you remember, Marcus Ambrose was playing that game at Sears Point one day installed the engine and as slow as these pace laps are that's that's risky you've got to be perfect he's got to be focused even during these caution flag laps to make sure he doesn't stall that engine or lose contact with the pace truck because he can't fall back or NASCAR will put trucks around him so this is intense time I, I think he was afraid that if he pitted and he went back got back in the back TV he would never get back in a position to control the restarts like he is right now and just think what happened to Chase Briscoe who got back there he's just in that crash remember Stuart Friesen still seeking his first career win in the truck series in fact he's been runner up twice this year six times in his brief truck series career that's the most ever without a win in this series it's also led the most laps of any driver without a win as well and he's been out front leading laps tonight and hoping that he can uh, erase his name from that statistical analysis the rest of the the rest of his career in the truck series <laughs> by getting a win tonight. Beginning with tonight's race coming into tonight he led over 430 laps. Next closest is Todd Gillum, about 200 back. Yeah, he's led 16 laps tonight, and that will he will continue to add to that total. Certainly for a few laps, anyway, at least. <laughs> Here they are in front, out in front of the race tonight. And you have a young man right now, Todd Gillum, running in the second spot, knowing that we've got two opportunities prior to the playoffs. He's going to have to win one of these two races to make the playoffs. You can't. You can't bank on having a great opportunity next week to win. He's got it right here in front of him. He knows he's racing one of the very best we've ever had on during right now, but he's got to try to make it happen. 40 left in the race, got a quick break, and we'll come back for the green at Eldora. Back at Eldora, the seventh running of the Dirt Derby, the Gander Outdoors Truck Series. Less than 40 to go as we get ready for this restart. They've just added a lap, but when we go back green, it will be Stuart Friesen and Todd Gilliland on the front row, and both of those drivers in desperate need of a victory. And you go back to row two with Grant Enfinger and Ben Rhodes. Rhodes needs a win to get in, and there's a lot of desperation right up there at the front. Can we go back to row three, Ben, with Mike Marler <laughs> and Sheldon Creed, where he's in desperate need. Like, Mike Marler just wants to set the truck world on its ears by taking that 33 truck to victory lane. Creed has to win to get in. You see the points uh, as they run right now with uh, Matt Crafton now on the bubble. If because of Stuart Friesen being in our leader right now, that would automatically put him in the playoffs if it were to end right here. Yeah, but if Gilliland would take the lead from Friesen, that, that, that switches. That number takes a big tumble. Yeah, and, well, and Gilliland move, would move up into the playoff standings, and that cut line would stay at the same spot, right? That's why I want to just watch these guys race on dirt. It'll all sort itself out at the <laughs> end because there's so many moving parts and pieces to this thing, including he's got, Gillen's got the right front tore off his truck from hitting a rut. 
He's got a patch on his right rear, setting in second position with a chance to win here at Eldora. Well, that's the great thing about, I think, this playoff structure is that they know right now all they got to do to get a playoff spot is win. That's all. So they're going to throw every bit of caution out the window, and they'll take as big a chance as they have to take anger as many as they need to anger if it means they're going to get the win. And a perfect example of that is what Stuart Friesen did when he didn't come to pit road. Crew chief Trip Bruce said, we're going to come with the 27 does. Friesen said, no, I'm not. And every caution lap that we run around this place, these, these fans want to see some green flag action, but every caution lap we run helps Stuart Friesen's cause. Yeah, and the fans not happy that they're adding another lap. They can't seem to get the lineup ready major league soccer action kicks off saturday on fox reigning mvp joseph martinez leads atlanta united against one of the top teams in the western conference the la galaxy all starts 4 30 eastern on fox and the fox sports app that was laton there gonna bring his game united in the galaxy uh, so ben rhodes has been uh, he's been posted by NASCAR yeah, black flag. You know, he's been the one that evidently has not been getting in line properly. See what NASCAR does if he thinks he's lined up properly. They'll let this go. I think they're going to let it go in anyway. And if he's not in the right spot, they just won't they're score. Gonna, they're going to bring him to pit road or quit scoring it. Friesen and Gilliland out front. 35 to go in the dirt derby. Look at Enfinger trying to make something happen on the bottom. Can he get in front of Gilliland? Oh, so close. Not going to happen. Can he slide up in front of that four truck and take the spot from Todd Gilliland? Not this time. Gilliland holds him off and will continue to chase Stuart Friesen. Marler in there in fourth. Look way down on the bottom. You see that silver truck coming off turn. Too. He's so low we couldn't see him for a bit, but he's making pretty good time down there, Phil. He is. Really hasn't been down there much this whole race, but he knows that if everyone's riding the rim out there, he has to make something happen. He's got to do it on the bottom. Now he's going to run the middle. Tyler Dipple trying to follow in his tire tracks. Sheldon Creed trying to take fourth from Marler and does for the time being a crossover coming back. Oh, but he's going to hang in there. Marler's not able to cross him over so far. Yeah, ben Rose still on the racetrack, so obviously Marler's going to make that pass. Sheldon Creed's going to try to cross him over again. Great battle for fourth. Marler bounces off the wall. Here comes Ben Rhodes to the inside of Creed. Trying to take advantage, and Matt Crafton is right behind Rhodes. Great view from the truck of Sheldon Creed, and the caution is out. Another caution, and it's the sixth truck of Norm Benning. Man. Hopefully we can have a quickie here and get back to action. This is just such great competition. Well, and I don't think Friesen's going to have to worry about uh, saving fuel now or worrying. We've had a lot of yellow flag laps. So we've had 53 yellow flag laps. So that should get it. Everybody comfortably in their window. Caution for the ninth time and you see 30 to go. We're going to have the finish to the dirt derby from Eldora when we come back.
It opened in 1954. Can you imagine the number of race fans that have been here since then, the number of great racers that have gone around this half mile dirt track here in Rossburg, Ohio. It's the Dirt Derby, the seventh running. Six different winners in our previous six races. Could someone new add their name to that list tonight? Chase Briscoe and Matt Crafton, the only two former winners in the field. And Right now, Crafton runs eighth, and Briscoe just ahead of him in the seventh spot. But it looks like Stuart Friesen's to lose. At least he's in a great spot with 27 to go. But how about Grant Infinger, Alan? Yeah, slowly but surely, Vince. Another good run for Grant Infinger here at Eldora. Finishes a fourth and, of course, second last year, where he lost by just .38 seconds last year here at Eldora. But a good night going so far. Last time they, they pitted after stage two and they took out a spring rubber out of the right rear. And since then, he's been driving toward the front trying to get another shot at winning here at Eldora. Bill, you see just ahead of Grant there, there's Todd Gillen. He's going to be in a bind here. We know that outside's going to launch. And up on the high side is Mike Marler. And he's going to have to be able to clear Marler. And Marler has been fast but not great on the initial get-go. So if I'm the spotter for Gillen, I'm saying you better jump up there in a hurry. Now we talked earlier about the, the guys who were in those must-win situations. Certainly the four of Gilliland and the two of Sheldon Creed are having good runs. Gilliland runs second and Creed is currently fifth. Yeah, everybody on that list besides, unfortunately, Harrison Burton who got involved in that accident. Yeah, Rhodes running sixth. 25 left. Stuart Friesen out front. Infinger diving to the bottom, going to try to steal second from Todd Gilliland. Yeah, that restart for Marler was just like you talking about. That allowed Gilliland to get up in front of him. But Grant Infinger was able to get in front of Gilliland. Slid right up in front, takes over second. And here comes Chase Briscoe on the bottom. Don't count out Briscoe yet. He dominated the first two stages, led them all before coming to pit lane at the end of stage two, losing a bunch of track position, but now he's creeping on the bottom, trying to look for some moisture, some grip, and some speed, and he's making up ground. Yeah, these, he loves these cautions. Yeah, he gains a few spots, gets a caution, gets another crack at it, and gains some more. There he is in front of the 99 now of Ben Rhodes. Put him up to fifth. Rhodes trying to challenge back. Great view from the windshield of Sheldon Creed. How about Christian Eckes racing up here inside of these guys? Done a nice job running eight. First time here. Said he wasn't sure how he'd be on dirt. Said, I just don't know what to even expect, but he has certainly held his own. Done a nice job tonight. Here goes Briscoe to the inside, trying to do a slide job on Marler. Looks like he's going to have enough room to do it. Marler's going to cross him over, though. He's made that move work a couple of times. Can he do the slaughter? Briscoe got the preferred line up there at the top, and he takes that position from Marler, and it's Briscoe now in fourth. What about this story? We talked about how hard it is to pass. Briscoe had a fast truck, went to pit road, got in a crash, and he's been driving back through the field. Only truck I've seen make the moves that he's made is that 27. Our Gander Outdoors, 20 to go. Stuart Friesen out front. One of two leaders tonight. Chase Briscoe led the first 93. Friesen has been out front ever since. About a second half lead right now over ending. You see the gap right there. See Briscoe now has moved up to the fourth spot, chasing down that fourth Gillen. Less than 20 to go. Briscoe continues to move. We got to take a break. You won't miss a thing, though. Side by side, going to keep on trucking.
It's getting tight at Eldora in the closing laps. <laughs> Stuart Friesen continues to lead, but Chase Briscoe was closing quickly, and then the caution came out and has bunched them all up, and it's given a lot of guys the thought that, hey, I, I might win this thing. Well, I, I guarantee you one guy that thinks that is Chase Briscoe. This has been so impressive. He's able to make those sliders. He's going to restart on the bottom, Phil. If I'm Stuart Friesen, I'm thinking maybe that kid could go to the bottom, slide me in turns one and two, and take the lead. So you got to be defensive. Stewart's got to make sure he gets a perfect start here because 27 is on the move. Yeah, and Antinger's been really good on the bottom, so uh, this thing is not over by a long shot. Friesen came into the night on the playoff bubble. Right behind him, Todd Gilliland in a must-win situation. And there's Jeff Hensley, the crew chief for Grant Infinger, who lost this race last year by 38 thousandths of a second. Or about three and a half feet. These guys just clobbering over one another. Trip Bruce, the crew chief for Stuart Friesen, who's finished runner-up more times without a win than anybody in series history. And he's trying to get that victory tonight. One of those runner-ups came right here a couple years ago. All those in the top eight seeking their first win this season. A couple of those not full-timers, of course, being Briscoe and Marler, but on the restart, it's Friesen and Infinger. 12 to go at Eldora. There goes Briscoe to the bottom. Infinger went with him. Stewart runs the cushion and is going to come off turn two with some momentum. Will it be enough? Friesen holds the spot, but Infinger not done yet, and Briscoe's digging in the middle. Infinger does get up in front of Gilliland to grab that second spot. Now, Frisco loses another spot, back to fifth. Great view from Sheldon Creed and the activity in front of him. Creed runs fourth. There's just so much room here for activity. You can run this thing three, four, five wide. Down to the bottom like you see Frisco there. Trying to do a slide job on Creed. Not going to quite get there. Ten laps left at Eldora. Briscoe trying to hold on and make ground, and he's going around, still has stayed green, and a Strickler has gone around as well, and it's still green. Now the caution has come out. Jennifer Jo Cobb, Cobb had spun and stalled over in turn four. So there was a ton of action that we were showing you in turn one and two, and Jennifer Jo Cobb had spun around at the other end of the racetrack as Strickler He's got it fired up. Unfortunately, not in time to keep from losing a lap. Ben Rhodes showed the urgency there once Grisco got sideways. It looked like Ben just went ahead and finished him off, as you can watch this develop. This is off a of turn four when he tried to do the slide job. Creed bounces off the wall, climbs up the wall, and look, Grisco tries to go up the hill to take that spot. Got sideways. Ben just said, I'm sorry, I have to go. It's getting late. He lost his momentum. He may have been able to save that truck had there not been contact from Ben Rhodes. The caution didn't come out for those incidents and those spins. It actually, we're being told, is the caution came out for Jennifer Jo Cobb at the other end of the racetrack. They were going to let Strickler spin it around and continue to go. Right, right there. I, I don't think Trace would have went out around with it had it not been for that contact. Look at Ross Chastain squeeze through that small hole. There's two Creed off the wall. Now watch what he sees. That's always good to see in your mirror. <laughs> That's where you want to see that. Matt Crafton narrowly avoided disaster there as well. And here's the 10 of Jim Joe Cobb. Makes contract with a 38 of Mark Smith. Mark's had a tough night. A couple of free passes got him back in the game, but rebounded inside the top 15 now. Coming back with the finish, who's going to win at Eldora?
closing laps <laughs> of the seventh running of the Dirt Derby. Stuart Friesen trying desperately to hold on to get his first career win, but he is having plenty of challenges. It's intense, isn't it? You know how bad these drivers want to win this race. And Stuart Friesen, he has to be perfect here, Phil, because that 98 has been strong on the bottom. And if you slip one tire, a guy can slide you, slip his truck right up in front of you and pin you behind him. Catch that wall with that right rear corner, slow your momentum enough. Once they get going after the restart, I think Friesen has been comfortably out in front, but it's restart after restart that is giving the others an opportunity to take a shot at it. And he told Michael when we talked to him at the end of stage two, I've got a really good long run truck. If he can get out there, get a little bit of a gap, then he can go on. But guys, we only have five to go right now. And remember, every lap, he's turned during these cautions, he's trying to save a little bit of fuel. To see if he can make sure he makes it to the checkered flag. That's still another variable that is haunting Stuart Friesen and Trip Bruce right now. Will, do we have enough? There's a look at Trip Bruce, the crew chief for Friesen. The they top have. nine right now have never won a race. I'm sorry, have not won a race this year. Friesen, Enfinger, Creed, Gillen, Marler, Rhodes, Dipple, Crafton, Shipley. How about sh the job Shipley's done on that 80 truck, guys? His truck was really damaged yesterday in practice. And they worked diligently on it oh, to yeah. get it prepared. And now they're going to add another lap. So it was going to come as four to go, but they can't get the lineup right. And we're told that there is a big piece of debris down in turn one that they have now just seen, and they need to get that out of the way. The, the oh no for me was I was ready for that restart. <laughs> I, I wanted to see the action, and NASCAR had to go out and pick up some debris. There you see that axe, axle down in turn two. That'll do it. Yeah, you can't hit that. We saw a piece of lead come out of a truck yesterday and tore the bottoms out of two or three trucks. Yeah, problem we're is. We're talking about Shipley's, uh, the damage exactly. that was done to his yeah. truck, and that was that exact incident. There's the officials. Get that and get out of here. Let's go race. Give us one to go here. Grant, Grant and Finger on the radio, just asking the team, has anyone done anything on the bottom? You know, trying to plan that move and get around Stuart Friesen. The team told him, not really. It's just too good coming off of, of two and four. There's just too much momentum up there. So we'll have to see what Grant and Finger can do to try to get by the 52 of Stuart Friesen. He has to try it on the bottom. He has to take a shot at him. Yeah, you've got to get the perfect restart. Put yourself in a position to get that nose out in front of Stuart Friesen and take advantage. These fans here at Eldora are on their feet in anticipation of this final restart. Yeah, there will be two to go when they come get the green. Who's it going to be? Chances are running out. Can Friesen hold off the field? You know, the odds are in the favor that he doesn't. I mean, he's finished second six times. <laughs> yeah, he hasn't got a victory, so can he do it? So many fans around the country of Stuart Friesen hoping that tonight is the night. The fans here at Eldora on their feet. The green is waving. Two to go in the Dirt Derby at Eldora. Friesen got a good launch. Creed chasing him. He'll slip into the second spot. Infinger into third. Look at that wide back there about fourth and fifth on back. Creed cleanly through three and four. One lap remaining. Stuart Friesen, one to go. Infinger slips into third, but it's going to be a chase for Stuart Friesen. If he can navigate this into the track mistake free, he will finally do it. The wait is over for Stuart Friesen. He has won at Eldora. That has to feel like the most relief that young man has ever felt in his whole life. So close, so many times. It's such a gamble he took. He put the ball in his court. He said, I'm going to win this race if I stay out. And that's what he did. You can see the relief in the body language. Tyler Dipple and Ben Rhodes expressing their displeasure with one another. Well, certainly Dipple is anyway.
I'm not sure that there is a single truck out there that doesn't look something like that, except for maybe Friesen's. Yeah, <laughs> as it looks pretty clean, except a ding or two here and there. All right, Hermie, as, what a relief it must be for Trip Bruce and company. Yeah, we got Trip over here in the middle of turns one and two. Finally, after all the ups and downs and the near misses and the second place finishes, your team is going to victory lane. You've won a lot of big races in your career, but what does this one mean to you? I just got the biggest. I mean, the anticipation, I don't know, I think it's been 11 years since I've been to victory lane. Stewart does it all the time, it makes us look easy every week. I mean, we've taken a lot of bad to get to, to, get to this good. I, I mean, I don't know, a little lost for words, but I just keep about, thinking about all of how we've stayed positive through a lot of bad, you know, just, just bad luck, bad whatever, bad calls, bad trucks, you name it. The list is long or the bad, this is one good right here. It just covers it all up. Congratulations. Thanks, man. Thank you. The thing about that, oh, we got in trouble. I thought we needed to finish this night off a little fight. Ben Rhodes. There was a fight during the fireworks. I don't know if that was Rhodes and uh, I think it was Dipple. Dipple, we saw them yeah. beating and banging on one another coming to the end. I saw Dipple squeeze Rhodes into the outside wall off too. I figured there would be a discussion about that. Seven truck races at Eldora, seven different winners. Stuart Friesen gets his first tonight. Thanks, Mike, and certainly a memorable night tonight here at Eldora where Stuart Friesen has won for the first time. He's in victory lane, and Hermie Sadler is there. Well, here he is. We said six times he's been runner-up in this series. Finally, he gets career victory, number one, and he does it on the dirt at Eldora. Stuart, we've watched this team all year, or for the last couple of years for that matter, run so well, be so close. 
But to get this first one at this racetrack with everything that was on the line, does that make up for all the ups and downs and hardships that this team has had the last couple of years? Absolutely. Uh, oh, man. Thank you to all the race fans that stuck with us, that kept pulling for us. Everybody that came to the Dirt Mob, I'd holler and said, man, I thought this was the week. Today, this is the day, and today, is this is the week. Ha <laughs> ha, all right, B. We won. Son Parker. Yeah, just thanks to everybody. Thanks to all these great race fans. Uh, this is meant to be. <laughs> we needed to get it done on the dirt. We missed the last two years. Um, what, a, what a special event. And Oh, my goodness. I, I don't know what to say. Just thanks to everybody. Thanks to Helmar, Chevrolet, uh, GMS Fab Shop for working their butts off here the last couple weeks. And uh, we appreciate it all. We appreciate all these guys. Man, these guys have been down and out, down and out. And they keep busting their butts for me and working on stuff and fixing stuff and putting in so much long hours. And I can't thank everybody enough. There was a lot of conversation between you and Tripp, who's right behind you, about what to do at the end of that second stage to put yourself, everybody's happy. Go ahead, Parker, show them. You ultimately made the call to stay on the racetrack, put it in your hands. Were you concerned about tires or fuel, or was being able to control the restarts the deciding factor for you? Yeah, just getting clean restarts. I knew that was going to be that was going to be tough. Um, you know, we just couldn't get a long run going, and you know, we, we those first two stages, we never really got a long run, and I'm like, well, we couldn't be too hard on the tires. We weren't using a lot of fuel. We got pretty slick, and uh, Triff left, left it up to me. And the driver always wants track position, so we took it and, uh, and held him off. That's Stuart Friesen. He's victorious at Eldor, Alan. And I'm down here with the driver who finished second, Sheldon Creed. You spun, you know, there's damage on the truck. It's not pretty, but you've got a big smile on your face. What second place mean to you here? Oh, this place is so tough. Uh, you got to be so, so easy. And Man, I don't know if there's a award for most trucks passed, but I felt like we came from the back a couple of times there. Started 10th, got to second, and it was all about starting on the top. And I don't know, I thought we were going to start on the top a few times and they would move us on the last lap and um, just was fortunate to start on the top those last two restarts. I think I started six and then I was fourth and um, I'm sure the 99's not happy with me. I was running fifth and, and doored them pretty good there for fourth and then caution came out and I was like, thank God. <laughs> so uh, just happy with all my guys. Uh, this is my second race with Jeff back on board and um, just can't think of my guy at GMS Racing enough. Chevy. We worked so hard on this thing last night, just trying to get it tight enough and get drive off. And I wasn't very good in the heat race. And usually that's a good sign on dirt if you're not very good right off the bat. So um, everyone watching, all my family back home, I think they're all at the, the local bar in Lakeside watching. So thank you guys. Uh, my girlfriend back home, my grandpa's here. I'm sure he's stoked. And uh, just this is cool for us to run a second. As, as brutal as our season's been, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. A resilient run for Sheldon Creed. look like with one to go one race left in the regular season that'll be at Michigan coming up on August 10th and now there's only one guy looking over his shoulder Phil <laughs> that's Matt Crafton he wants to make sure that he can either win or somebody below him doesn't yeah it's very simple right now 60 points available Ben Matt Crafton if we don't have somebody win below that cut line he will make the playoffs. Grant Enfinger essentially is locked in right now. Every one of those trucks below Matt Crafton could Can't win if without at a Michigan. Doubt. That's how com competitive this series is. What a great run for Mike Marlar tonight. He finishes fourth, and let's hear from him now. Uh, yeah, Dirt fans will know the name Mike Marlar, but this is his first NASCAR event. Look at the smile on his face. P4, what was it like out there surviving and making it up to a top five? Oh man, it was a crazy race, you know, and I've just never done it. Everything was a first for me. My, actually, my radios fell out uh, after the first stage. I was trying to get my little Swiffer to clean my windshield, so so I winged it about half the race. And I finally, under that last stage, got my earphones back in, and awesome, awesome race, man. It's so fun, and every little kid in the world uh, gets to gets to dream about NASCAR, and then us racers start racing, and we want, you know. Deep down, everybody wants to race NASCAR, man, and it's awesome that, that we got to do it and, and had such a great finish tonight. It's so fun. Doesn't matter the age. He took advantage of the opportunity, guys. Yeah, well done. The 41 year old from Winfield, Tennessee. Terrific finish. And this is what got Ben Rhodes upset. There's the 0 2 of Dipple kind of adoring him there on the white flag lap when we saw that uh, Rhodes retaliated and then Dipple came back and gave him a shot a couple of times as they came. And then afterwards, you see Ben Rhodes going back to try to get some revenge on Dipple, had to be separated. I, I think maybe 
little bit of frustration there, but it, it was just hard racing on the last lap, it looked like. Yeah, we saw that all night long, and just as the laps wind down, the intensity ramps up, and that's the result. The regular season finale, Saturday, Michigan. What a thrill that'll be to determine exactly who gets into the playoffs. But tonight, it was all about Stuart Friesen, winning for the first time in his career. He does it at the Dirt Derby at Eldora.